Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for a very special edition of Wowza Live from South Carolina with Alex Kostich, who just won the 12 mile swim around Charleston. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Still oh. got my numbers on, just had a quick shower to make the call, but uh, thanks a lot. It's really uh, great to be here. Nice to see you again, Stephen, and uh, nice to be in Charleston. Never been yeah. here before. So I heard you just heard about this race, the only race that I know of in America, a few weeks ago. Yeah, um, a couple of weeks ago, my friend Susan Casimer, who uh, I know from the St. Croix swim that I do every year around this time, um, she emailed me and she said, hey, do you, you know about this race? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be there and we're not gonna see each other in St. Croix, why don't you come and do it and we can have a little reunion. And I looked into it and I thought, well, this sounds interesting and 12 miles sounds challenging in light of our COVID uh, pool restrictions and right. limited training times. So I'm always up for challenge and um, I entered and it was kind of a spur of the moment decision, but yeah, I'm here. Yeah, and, and Kathleen Wilson, who's, who founded the race and still managed the race, uh, she let you in and got you all situated. She did, Kathleen is amazing. She actually um, had a wedding last night before the pre-race check-in and the, the pre-race talk. So um, she did the wedding and then came like an hour late to the check-in. And uh, she's like such a super high energy lady and she runs everything so great. Um, it was a perfectly run event, especially in light of all the COVID challenges. I, I must say, I will probably be back. Yeah, great. And so it's 12 miles around around Charleston. Can you describe the race to us? Yeah, well, I mean, I literally flew in Friday night, had Saturday to get ready, and the race was this morning, so I'm still kind of getting oriented here, but um, Charleston is like sort of a peninsula, and it's, uh, it's surrounded by two rivers, the Copper River, I think, on one side, and the it begins with an A, but another river that comes down and they both feed down into each okay. other. So it's brackish water. It's not necessarily salt water. It's, yeah. it's, it tasted very fresh to me, but it's kind of a mixture. Um, it's very brown. It's murky. You can't really see much, but I was surrounded by dolphins at one point. I didn't see them because they were about eight feet away and you can only see about three feet in front of you. But um, yeah, so it's a peninsula and you start um, on the Copper River bridge or, or right under the bridge. Um, which is also the site of the really famous running race, a 10K that has like 40,000 people. I think it's one of the largest running races in uh, the Northern uh, America, in North America. So you start there and you loop around Charleston, which is really scenic and interesting because you get to see like the waterfront and battery and all that. And then you end up uh, looping around into and heading north into this like really nondescript kind of marshy area with, um, mud and straw like seaweed stuff floating and it, it i have to say like the last part of the race is not as cool as the first part of the race but got it's it. 12 miles so you get six miles of cool stuff and then six miles of not so cool stuff but the worst part for me was the last three miles um because the conditions are supposed to be favorable with the currents helping you along the way okay. but for some reason this year the currents were actually against us and um the last three or actually miles nine, 10 and 11 out of the 12 and a half miles were really, really tough. Like every time I turned my, uh, lifted my head to sight, you know, a wave would get, uh, would splash oh, me really? in the face and I couldn't see where I was going. The sun was in my eyes and um, it was like a washing machine in there for, for three oh, miles. Okay. And those three <laughs> miles took about an hour and it was the longest hour of my life, oh, especially wow. when you're tired at the end, you know? Yeah. Now go back. I mean, you know, we've been in this, uh, Lockdown, semi-lockdown, relaxed lockdown, uh, pool restriction, you know, pool uh, limitation condition in, in California. How, where and how have you trained this last uh, eight months? Well, it hasn't been easy, um, you know, especially California and LA of all of California is sort of like the epicenter of COVID in the United States. So we have more restrictions than most people. And so like I've been seeing friends around the country, you know, have limited pool time months before we ever got it. And in fact, we still don't have most pools open. So I've been making do, um, I've been cross training a lot. Uh, I did a do it yourself marathon a couple months ago, uh, a running marathon just for, you know, to stay in shape and stay engaged. But, um, because it was summer, I would drive down uh, to Long Beach and swim laps around Naples Island, which okay. you may recall, yeah. uh, you know, in <laughs> knowing what you know and your history with, with uh, Long Beach. But I would do uh, two laps and sometimes three laps around really? Naples. 
right? Um, because one lap is about 4,500 meters. So a normal workout for me would be two laps. And then to get ready for this race, once I just did three laps, which was okay. still only nine miles, not, um, not 12, but I figured it was close enough. And uh, yeah, I've just been making do, you know, I've been doing the best I can. Um, it's not easy. I don't know what's gonna happen in the winter. Uh, I guess I'll break out my Roka wetsuit and keep going down there, but I would drive an hour to Long Beach at least once a week. And sometimes if my schedule allowed, I'd go during the week as well Wow. Uh, and do that. Do you, do you find any pool time here and there um, in Los Angeles? Yeah, there's one pool that I won't mention because okay. I don't want people to discover it. But um, yes, there's one pool that's open and I, I go there when I can, um, you know, for at least an hour uh, increment. And uh, it's too warm and it's short course, but it's better than nothing. It at least get, lets me keep the feel for the water. Yeah, I mean, over here in Orange County, just a little bit south of you, um, we can we can use the, the pools for an, 45 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, one person per lane, and you've got to sign up and it's tremendous competition to get a slot. Oh, for sure. I've looked into a few of those sign up pools because they do have a couple like by the LA airport and stuff. And uh, it takes me an hour and 15 minutes to warm up. So swimming for 45 minutes really doesn't do me any good. I'd rather just go for a run and wait till the weekend. But uh, yeah. so, we all have to do what we can. Yeah, so you so you did your, uh, you know, one nine mile, uh, workout how did you find it 12 miles i mean was it tough was it did you have that big big swim memory in your body and you, you just got through it yeah i mean i have a pretty fast turnover anyway so i you know went out like a shot because i always like to do that and get out in front and um oddly enough i wasn't in front after three miles oh. um I had, I had gone the way that the course uh director had suggested and cut directly across the river and then hugged the coastline. But somebody else, uh, I think a guy from Iowa uh, State University swam down the middle, like right under the bridge and the current was much stronger there. So around mile three, I actually caught up to this guy and I was like, where did he come from? And that freaked me out. Cause I thought, well, what if there's more people ahead of him? You yeah. know, and I didn't want to stop and feed cause that would lose my time. So like, I was already at the point where I wanted to feed and drink. So I just kept going so I could get a comfortable margin in front of him. Um, and then around the halfway point, like five and a half miles or six miles, I stopped. Um, I looked around, I, I was comfortably ahead of him and I didn't see anybody ahead of me. And then um, I just got into my groove and I stayed, you know, I tried to keep my stroke rate the same. It slowed down a little bit, especially when the current kicked up and uh, the wind was in my face. But um, by the end, the last mile was actually pretty fun because then the, the tides changed and I rode this roller coaster into the finish line. And I was just like zooming by, um, you know, the spectators on the side of the river and the and the uh, marsh grass and stuff. It was cool. Got it, got it. I, I hear there's a lot of beautiful homes along the rivers is. Oh. Yeah, I took a little walk yesterday, um, you know, just around downtown Charleston I, and I played tourist a little bit. They're gorgeous, gorgeous homes and they've all been passed down through generations and they're, they're big, um, family homes, uh, lots of history, you know, filled with antiques. Like this is a, apparently an antique destination. So people, collectors come from all over the world and, and shop on King Street and Queen Street. But um, I took a little walk and the houses were beautiful. And I have to say during my swim, I didn't really pay attention to them. I know sort, I knew sort of that they were going by, but I was um, at, that was at the point when I had seen this other swimmer and I was kind of freaked out and I was like, all right, I got to get my game face on. Uh, now, I heard there was 40 swimmers, for 40 solo swimmers? Yeah, about that. Um, wow. Yeah, which is actually, you know, I guess you kind of weed out the weekend warriors when you do a 12-mile race. Yeah. And um, I think it was a really successful finish rate. Um, most, yeah. if not all, uh, finished, including my friend Susan. Shout out to Susan. Okay, cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was a really nice day in the water. Um, yeah. Other than Susan, were there other uh, people that you would recognize, either know them or Facebook friend or something? Well, you know, um, the open water community is like a family. And even if people have never met you, they, they, they know about you or, or whatever. And there were a couple of people that I had met in other races years ago, maybe five or six years ago. And one of the highlights for me also was um, at the finish line, um, a guy that I trained with, uh, 
as an eight-year-old in New England, Tom Peterson, who went to Harvard, so you may know yeah. him as an alumni, uh, showed up with his family because they were down here for the weekend renting a house. Um, so he came to the finish because he saw me post on social media and he was like, I can't believe you're here. I'm going to try to make it. And so the first person I saw when I came to the finish line was Tom Peterson uh, taking a video of me. <laughs> wow. So this would have been at uh, Brunel's Gators Swim Club? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's... Uh... What is but, that? Nineteen eighty. Uh, well, it, it goes back to nineteen seventy eight for me. And Tom Peterson joined the team probably in the early eighties. And you know, uh, then we both graduated and went our separate ways to college. You went to Harvard. I went to Stanford in eighty uh, eight. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, other than the the swim, um, you know, did you get a towel? Is there an award ceremony? What other things that does uh, Kathleen do for the swim? Well. Um, you know, so I, I did get, we got a nice little goodie bag, like a mesh bag with a whole bunch of stuff in it. There's like a really cool little um, post-it note booklet with the logo of the swim. And the logo of the swim is actually really nice. Um, I don't want to be off camera, but I can I can grab my shirt and show it to you. But yeah, we got a little goodie bag of stuff, mostly like to get ready for the race. And then she gave me a dry bag um, as a first prize. Uh, I think because this year, just with COVID and everything, they just couldn't, you know, do an award ceremony. And, and I, I must say they were really, really careful and um, strict about the COVID protocols. Uh, a lot of people were interested in how they handled that, given that, you know, there are people coming from all over the country to do this race and in close proximity. So they were really good. And um, I got a drive bag as a first prize, but I could have used it before the race rather than after because <laughs> my kayaker could have put all my stuff in it. So what were some of the COVID uh, protocols that, that you followed? Um, well, of course, like, you know, obviously uh, masking uh, before the race until we were getting in the water. And then when we entered the water, it was one person at a time, timed about 10 seconds uh, apart. And then we lined up in the water, uh, again, keeping our distance until um, she let us go. But then also just um, the, uh, what do you call it? The pre-race talk uh, was abbreviated. It was a little different. They did it in a hotel lobby and they did it over a period of three hours. So it was kind of like trickle in and, and do it when you oh. can. So they didn't have everybody congregating all at once, um, which worked as well. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And and travel there was was normal. I mean, mask on, a, on an airplane and, and that kind of stuff. Well, well, what's normal anymore, you know? Yeah. yeah, like I got I got on the plane and everybody, of course you have to wear your mask. You can't board the plane without one. Um, they're not serving, you know, anything other than a little Ziploc bag with a cookie and a, and a tiny bottle of water. But um, yeah, I got here just fine. I think, you know, as long as you're careful and I bring hand sanitizer with me everywhere and I wipe down the tray table, the seat, the, the, um, the seat, uh, the arm rests on the seat. You know, I was doing that before COVID even, so. <laughs> well, you're, you're well traveled, you're a world traveler, so. Oh, that's well, great. You can never be too careful. And I didn't want to get sick before the race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is great. I mean, I could see, you know, that, that inner joy that comes with uh, doing a race, especially after this very strange year, so. Yeah, as tired as I am, it's an adrenaline rush to just be able to say that I did one, you know, and um, it was so nice to see people, uh, again, that I recognize and that, uh, that I've met before and just sort of be part of that community again um, and, and do something new. You know, for me, I'm kind of like a creature of habit. I do the same couple races every year and I, if, if it works for my schedule, I'll do a couple new ones, but this was a, a really ideal excuse to come out and uh, see a new city and enjoy the food scene and uh, do a race. Yeah, and so you... I mean, you've done the Waikiki Rough Water Swim, St. Croix, all these swims were literally over 20, uh, or 20 years. Uh, yeah. Five years, I think. I'm a dinosaur. Yeah. I mean, you've never not, you've never been out of competition for this long, correct? Correct. I've never had a summer where I haven't competed either in a pool or the ocean since 1975. Wow. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased. And I was getting creative this year because I was getting so frustrated. I actually went to Mexico and did a race that was canceled. It was the El Cruz, which is oh, the yeah. Um, yeah. 10K from yeah. Cancun to Isla Mujeres. And it was supposed to be a Memorial Day. It was canceled because of COVID. Then they postponed it to Labor Day and they canceled it again. So I went out for Labor Day anyway, and I just did the swim myself. 
Um, really? So you, yeah. So you could say that I, um, you know, I had two races, but that one was kind of unofficial. And uh, I did my goal time. I wanted to break two hours for the 10K and I went uh, 159.23. So I was really? just under the wire. No yeah. way. Yeah. That's flying over there. It was, it was good conditions. Very hot though. The water was like 83 or 82 and I got super dehydrated. Like I nearly passed out when I finished. So um, if anybody's planning to do that swim, I would recommend getting a kayaker and bringing plenty of fluids. No way. You did it by yourself. Well, I, I had, um, I had a kayaker oh, okay, okay. and I had a boat. Yeah. Okay. But I did it. I did the swim solo yeah, okay. for fun. Like just to say I did it basically. Yeah. Oh, wow. What a summer. What a year. <laughs> Got to make the most of it. You know, we yeah. do what we can. Yeah. Oh. oh, do you know of any other, can you sneak in a few more swims before, uh, 2021? You know, now that like the, the fire has been lit, you know, I'm like, well, what else can I find, you know, before it gets too late. And there's, I, I think there's a couple more swims on the East coast, um, or somewhere in the Midwest. I'm, I'm not sure where, but somebody, I heard somebody talking at the race. So I was going to email Kathleen, um, later tonight after I recovered with my celebratory filet mignon and ask her if she knew of anything else coming up. Oh man. Well, we'll, we'll keep on following you. Oh, well, likewise, like I said, I love the community. It's so great what you're doing and what everybody else in the swimming community is doing. And I know it's a challenging time for everybody, but all we can do is make the best of it. And this too shall pass. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Stephen. Great to see you again. And hi to everybody. All right.